Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sharo Tariq. Uh, I will be presenting this paper, uh, Am I a Real or Fake Celebrity? Uh, in which we will evaluate uh, evaluated face recognition and verification APIs using a deepfake impersonation attack. Okay, so what are deepfake? Uh, so deepfakes are synthetic media in which one person uh, is uh, replaced with someone else in a video or an image. Uh, usually their face uh, is replaced. And uh, so for the motivation of this work, DPEG is, uh, uh, we are actually evaluating different face verification APIs. Uh, so face verification APIs are used in different uh, applications. Uh, for example, in biometric identity verification uh, it, and uh, also for general face tagging is on social media and news media. And also on the face recognition in some remote meeting settings as well these days. So in all those scenarios, if a person can impersonate someone else using deepfake methods, then they can actually bypass biometric identity verifications or uh, a person could be, a victim could be uh, tagged in a image which he does not belong to. And also you can fake an uh, exam in a remote meeting setting as well using a deepfake. So for the APIs which we consider in this work are three, uh, belongs to three different categories. The so first one is commercial face recognition APIs in which we uh, evaluated Amazon recognition uh, and Microsoft Azure face API and Never Clover face recognition API. And uh, so we use the celebrity recognition API demo uh, from these uh, APIs just for uh, proof of concept. And uh, also we used uh, a commercial face verification API. Uh, so it's different than recognition API. Uh, we use face plus plus. And uh, finally, uh, we use uh, two open source face recognition tools, which is VGG face and ARC face. So, uh, let's talk about now, let's talk about the threat model. So we took, uh, we had made some assumption for our threat model that some of the service provider use these APIs in their authentication or verification workflows as it is, has been marketed by these APIs as well. So for the attack setting, uh, what the attacker does is he, uh, the attacker gets some photos of the victim and he uses the defect generation method uh, to generate some uh, defect uh, photos or videos of the victim. And then uh, upon attack uh, on these APIs, and these APIs actually recognize the deep fake images or the videos of the victim as real uh, photos or videos of those victims. And as a result, the attacker can impersonate the victim. And in some cases, the attacker can also apply a secondary attack like uh, we saw in Zoom bombing uh, recently. So before we go into detail, I will talk about the uh, different categories of defect impersonation attacks, which is short, short formed as DI attacks. So we can, first we can do face replacement in which some part of the face like lips or eyes or the entire face can be swapped with the victim face in a target video like shown here. And uh, the second category is facial reenactment in which we take the victim's photo or a small video of the victim. And then we use another driver video and try to uh, use that driver video to uh, uh, drive the expressions, gaze and mouth pose, uh, all those things in the victim video. And finally, we take uh, the facial synthesis category where we take two sources. One is a victim's face or video, and the other one is a target image. And we, uh, we use the, uh, different blending methods and GAN based methods to actually combine these two together to make a synthetic victim look alike uh, identity like shown here in the example. So, uh, so for this, uh, we use uh, different benchmark data sets. Okay. So we made two, uh, two benchmark data sets, one, uh, one for each category. Uh, for example, we use uh, facial, for facial synthesis, we made Slab blend, blend data set. And for facial reenactment, we made a slab form FOM data set. And uh, we also collected a facial replacement data set from online sources on the internet. And uh, also we use two standard benchmark data set, which is lab DF and Vox lab TH. Links for all of them are provided on our GitHub page. 
Uh, so for the methodology, let's first start with the definition of the deepfake impersonation attack. Uh, so uh, give, if we are given a reference image, we can think of it as a victim image and then a target image, which we want the victim to be replaced in. And we have a defect generation method app. Then we, it is possible to create a defect image uh, of the victim uh, using this uh, uh, using this formula, uh, where uh, theta is actually the set of values of uh, for all the parameters uh, which belong which belongs to the function f, given some defect generation method, and uh, l is the loss function uh, which is to minimize some distance matrix of p over the function. So uh, next oh, for the evaluation, we used different matrices. So first is the evaluation of the attacks, so which is targeted and untargeted attacks. Um, so untargeted is mentioned in the appendix of the paper. So we are not mentioning here in the presentation. Uh, so for the targeted attack, uh, what we are trying to achieve is if the defect of the victim is recognized as real by the API, then we consider it as a successful targeted attack as shown by this formula here. And uh, uh, next we use three different evaluation matrices. I will go into more detail about them later as well, but I'll give a small uh, uh, detail, uh, small introduction of what they mean. As that, so defect with high confidence means that uh, if there is a successful attack, then in that case, what is the prediction score for that? Uh, by the API. So if the prediction score is above beta, which is which we consider 80, 80 percent, uh, if the prediction score is above 80, then we consider is that the defect is predicted with high confidence. And and the next one is uh, defect with high similarity. So in this case, if the uh, API did not predict it, the uh, and the defect as uh, real, but the similarity between real and defect is quite high, which we use a similarity. So these API also have similarity uh, methods to, uh, to compare two images and see how much similar they are. So we see if they are similar above 80% threshold, then we consider them that the fake and real are highly similar. And the third one is about successful impersonation of celebrity because we were considering mostly celebrities in this case. Uh, so in the, this is just giving a general overview of how many celebrities uh, we attacked and how many were actually uh, successfully personated. So we will go in detail later. So this is our uh, defect, uh, defect impersonation attack pipeline. Uh, we can see attack data set and then we have commercial APIs and then we compare the matrices. Next, uh, we, uh, I'll show you the experiment uh, settings. Uh, and this is the data set uh, statistics. We use five different data sets around 8,000 videos belonging to around 340 or 339 celebrities. And uh, uh, the racial distribution is mostly of the over white celebrities. And the next is East, East Asian, then Black, then Hispanic, then South Asian, and then multiracial. Uh, so the, this is the summary of the results for the targeted and non-targeted attack. So for the targeted attack was more successful against the face plus plus API. Uh, we should note that the face plus plus API is a face verification API, not the face recognition API. So this finding is very critical that this attack is such, so much successful against this API. And, and the next one is that the neighbor, NAV means the neighbor API is the most vulnerable against non-targeted attack. Uh, we can see the appendix R paper for more details on non-targeted attack. And Microsoft and uh, Amazon API are equally vulnerable against targeted as well as non-targeted attack. We can see here and uh, here. And the last one is that the open source API, which is ArcFace and VGGFace, both of uh, were significantly vulnerable against the targeted attack, as we can see here. Uh, whereas the ArcFace is more vulnerable than VGGFace. Okay, so next we will go now into detail of the evaluation matrices. Uh, so for the first evaluation matrices, which is defect with high confidence, so DI attack that results in high prediction score on victim defect. So we can see here that Microsoft API uh, is the most vulnerable than uh, Amazon and then neighbor. Uh, why this 
uh, this matrix is important is because that a high precision score can give the user a false impression that the prediction is trustable, uh, which, uh, uh, which is not good in any case for deep fakes. So the next one is uh, DHL. And uh, for defect with high similarity, if the DI attack that result in high similarity score between the victim's real photo and its deep fake. So in this case, it, uh, the Amazon API is the most vulnerable. And why is it important is that because the similarity score is sometimes used as an alternative or an additional matrix for face verification by many online services. So if the similarity score is high, this can give also give a false impression that the predi uh, predictions are trustable. Okay, so the next one is about uh, the successful impersonation of celebrities. So it gives us a total percentage of successful impersonation using a targeted attack. Here we can see both Microsoft and uh, Amazon APIs are equally vulnerable. And uh, why this is important is that for a given victim, it provides us a data statistics of the success rate for the attacker. So here we can see that almost around 80% of the victims can be successfully impersonated by the attacker. So it is not dependent on the celebrities. It will be, uh, so in general public, it will be have same, almost same probability of success. We also compared our attack with adversarial attacks. Uh, so adversarial attacks are, can also be used to, uh, to change the prediction scores of uh, these APIs. However, defect impersonation attacks are different properties than adversarial attacks. I'll go over detail about these here. So the, in adversarial attack, the victim's real photo and, uh, is almost identical to the perturbed photo as we know. However, for DI attack, it can be the same. It can be the same scenario where victim real photo and defect can be in similar setting. However, we can change the setting by changing the background uh, using defect generation methods or environment, or even we can change the activity performed by the victim uh, using defect methods. So this attack is more versatile. And also we can apply adversarial attack on top of DI attack. We'll show this in the defense section. So next, uh, this is our results. And we can see here that the DI attacks is more uh, is better than transfer uh, adversarial attack. Uh, however, it is not that good uh, as the genetic adversarial attack, but uh, genetic adversarial attacks takes longer to generate. So next we will go into the defense setting. So we, uh, we apply three different types of defense. So the first one is single model. Second one is a sim simple combination and third is uh, deep stacking ensemble. So single model is we just apply a single defect detection model. We, we actually make a defense method where we put our defect detector on top of these APIs as a wrapper so that the, that the input first goes to the detector and then goes to the API. So it could be single model or it, uh, in the simple combination, we check if all of them says it's not it's real, then we consider it as a real, otherwise we consider it as fake. And the third one is a non-linear combination where we give all of these API, uh, all of these uh, methods to a non-linear combination and we decide based on the deep stacking ensembles result, whether it's real or defect. So with a general defect detection training, this is how it's done that we have real and fakes and we give it to a defect detector and the training is done. And once the training is finished, the defect detector labels it as real or fake. It's just a two class classification problem. So Based on this, we uh, we have the uh, we develop our defense, and the results are like are shown in this table. Uh, so for the defect detector, if we just apply defect detector on top of the uh, as a wrapper on top of the APIs, we can actually reduce the attack success rate to almost like zero uh, percent or very close to zero. However, we saw that if we just uh, attack the these detectors using adversarial attacks then the attack success rate goes back to almost the same level as it, as it was before the defense, uh, as it is shown here in this box. Uh, so what we did is we applied a cellular training. So if we try, if we apply a cellular training, we can achieve uh, closer to uh, the de uh, defense without a, uh, 
the adversarial attack, but not that close. So this can be considered as the best performance because it is handling adversarial attacks as well. So in discussion, we consider uh, if we should apply uh, or by a threshold by ourselves, or we should consider the prediction as it is. Uh, uh, so we consider the prediction as it is because we did not want to put any other constraint because the user will be using the APIs as it is not with any user uh, like self-defined co like constraints or thresholds. Sharos, uh, sorry to interrupt you. 15 minutes okay. have passed, so it would be uh, good to leave some time for Q&A. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so this is the continue. last slide. Okay, okay. yeah. So, no problem. So, so the conclusion is that we introduce a novel impersonation application using DeepFake, and then we introduce two data sets, and uh, we showed the uh, defense mechanism as well. So if you want to access our data set or want to access the code, it's available on this link. You have to fill out the form for to access the data set. Thank you for listening. Okay. Okay, so uh, thank you, Shadows, for the presentation and for uh, staying on time. Uh, we mm -hmm. have some time for questions. So uh, in case there are uh, questions, you can uh, like, yeah, ask them. Okay, uh, Andrew Boward has a question. So. Uh, thanks very much for, for the presentation. Um, my, my question is around um, with the, uh, the commercial APIs that, that you tested, so AWS and, and Microsoft, um, did you share your results with, um, with Amazon or, or Microsoft? And if so, how did they uh, respond? Uh, actually, uh, we are in the process of doing that. Uh, we have not heard of anything from that yet from them. So, yeah, but uh, I think we'll hear something from them soon. Uh, 